bless and throw it on YouTube. Peace and blessings in Jesus' name. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is uh, Hebrew King Moses. Here's my cameraman, Robert. It's been, a, it's been a while, but God is about to bless us. In Jesus' name, as we start this new video, we're just going to walk and talk on Tuesday, October 17th. I've been up since 4.08 in the morning. You know me. I get up early. I'm ready to pray, read the Bible, get my discipline, get my devotions, and thank God for God's church and God's true pastors. I was able to tune in live with Pastor Abraham Lincoln Washington of Jacksonville, Florida Legacy Ministries, who used to be the pastor of Rock of Our Salvation Church on the west side of Chicago, which I just visited on October 8th. No, no, keep going. It's okay. Don't worry about the train. We're out here. We no, no, I need to church town, but these churches need to rise up and get the Holy Ghost and preach the word. So I went out to Rock Church on the west side of Chicago. Let's go this way. On the west side of Chicago, on October 8th, it was the 40th anniversary. The church was founded by African-American leader, Dr. Raleigh Washington. And I was able to bless, be blessed to meet him after the service and have him pray for me. The Lord blessed me to hear the word from the current pastor, Robert Stevenson, who is in the lineage, who was trained by the second pastor who was there when my uncle used to teach there from 2003 to 2007. Pastor Abraham Lincoln Washington, who led us in the uh, community live prayer on the phone this morning and is doing it all week as we engage in spiritual warfare and call down the power of God in Jesus' name to bring up the inspiration and revival of evangelism in Jesus' name. How's that video looking, Robert? We good? Okay. Now what I want to do is here we are at Crossway. This is Crossway Publishers. Now out here in Wheaton, we got a lot of churches. Let's go up the hill. I'm going to take you to Second Baptist Church, which I went on October 1st. See, I'm an evangelist, so I'm, I'm visiting many different churches, and I've got my pastors, and I've, I've got the work that God wants me to do to reach the Hindus, the Muslims, the Jews, the New Agers, and I send them to their uh, bona fide churches and pastors that can lead them and shepherd them according to their vicinity, location, cultural relevance. As long as uh, what the pastor is preaching is based on the Word of God, solid doctrine, and living in holiness, and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Uh, but therefore, I also visit different churches on Sundays to connect around Chicagoland. And praise God for all the mighty men of God. But let's get back to business. We're walking up the hill right now to Second Baptist Church. And uh, we were just discussing the end times. Um, Robert, what did you say? What did you ask me about just a few minutes ago? About the war. What war? The war with Hamas and Palestine. <clears throat> what do you think You're about talking it? about the Hamas terrorists that came in and attacked a bunch of Israelis and Jews? And the Jews are now having to defend themselves. Yeah, probably, probably going to annihilate and decimate uh, Hamas. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I believe that this is a sign of end times. Matthew 24, Jesus said there will be earthquakes, famines, wars, plagues, pestilence, disease. And we've had that since the end times began when the Holy Ghost was poured out in Acts chapter 1. But now we're in the end of the end times, especially as the book of Daniel said, knowledge shall increase. Men shall travel to and fro. And these Matthew 24 signs shall increase and get worse and worse and more and more frequently. Israel being attacked is another end time sign, just like one of the biggest signs was when the nation of Israel came back together in 1948 after about 2000 years. That's prophecy of the Bible. Now we know there's good and bad Jews, like there's good and bad Muslims, like there's good and bad atheists, like there's good and bad Christians, but everybody's evil and needs to get saved by Jesus, the one true God. And the Quran is a false gospel. The Quran is a false book. It is not the truth. Muhammad is a false prophet, but I'll tell you one thing, there's also false Jews. There's also Jews who are of the synagogue of Satan. Jesus warned us about it. This is scripture. I don't I don't play around. Let's go. You know what? Let's walk over towards the church. I don't play around picking sides of who I'm going to be with in the world. I represent the kingdom of God. And I'll tell you, I'm saved by grace. So I'm nobody special. Everybody needs Jesus to be saved. So I don't I don't I don't represent the Jews over there, I don't represent the Palestinians. I represent Jesus, who was God manifest in the flesh. And according to his human manifestation as a man, he was a Jew. And Jesus said salvation is of the Jews. But who are the true Jews? Not those Pharisees and Sadducees that put Jesus to death. But the original church was all Jewish. Peter was Jewish. All the apostles were Jewish. All the first church was Jewish until Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Right? But Jesus also, uh, in Revelation, he said, watch out for those synagogue of Satan Jews. And so even now, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I will name one name, the Rothschild family, richest family on earth. They don't, they don't follow Jesus. They don't follow Yahweh. They got trillions of dollars orchestrating wars, making money off of chaos, serving the devil. So Lord Jesus rebuked the false Jews. 
And may they repent and get saved. I pray for my enemies even, even corrupt politicians. I don't believe in any politicians. I don't trust any politicians, but I pray they get saved in Jesus' name. The book of Daniel says that God brings up kings and tears down kings, right? But at the same time, I honor and respect the laws of the land as long as they don't uh, contradict with the Bible. Because if they tell me I can't read my Bible, you know I'm going to keep reading my Bible, right? But at the same time, I'm going to follow good government, just like the church has order. Now, getting back to the war, I pray for peace in the Middle East, of course. But Jesus said these things are going to happen. There is going to be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes back, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's why I don't, that's why I don't bow down to presidents and kings, because I am a king. Why? Because I serve the King of Kings. You can call me Brother Raj. Raj means king because you're a brother king too in Jesus name. We're all brothers and sisters, kings and queens and priests of the most high. All my brothers out there that follow Jesus, you're a king and priest according to Revelation chapter 1, 6. All my sisters out there, you're a queen and priestess according to Revelation chapter 1, 6. And Robert and I out here right now are kings with messengers of God right now. So we represent the peace of Jesus. We know these things are meant to happen. But of course, we pray for even the, the evil is uh, Islamic Hamas terrorists, Lord. May they repent and get saved. And if they don't repent and get saved in Jesus' name, because Jesus wants to save everybody, even the most wicked man on earth, may the Lord shut them down. Amen. Actually, that's what I pray for all my enemies, is that, uh, Lord, save them. Lord, may they repent and get saved. But Jesus said, bless your enemies. But you know what? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because anybody that tries to curse a man of God, that curse is going back on them by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So, Lord, Jesus, have mercy upon my enemies. But if they don't repent and get saved, Lord, shut them down. Because the Lord fights for me. The Lord is a man of war. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. The man God, the God, the man. All powerful, sovereign God. And so Jesus is coming back. I pray for the Jews as well. Jews without Jesus are going to hell. I don't care if you're a genetic Jew. I don't care if you're an ethnic Jew. Because a true Jew is one who is one spiritually, like the book of Romans says, grafted in by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? But there is prophetic implications with the Jewish people, the ones who are good and the ones who are bad. And I follow some messianic rabbis. Those are 100% ethnic Jews who become Christians and have become pastors. Right? And I listen to them. One of my guys, just one of my messianic rabbis just came out of Israel. Bombs were going off while he was there. So we pray for the Jews, we pray for the Muslims, we pray for peace in the Middle East. But don't get it twisted. We ain't supporting no Jews that don't love Jesus. We pray for their salvation. And we know God has a plan for them because it said in the end, God will bring them all to repentance when they realize who Jesus is, right? Revelation chapter one, behold, he cometh with the clouds and all kindreds of the earth shall see him and wail. Those who pierced him, they will understand that Jesus was the Messiah. Baruch Hashem Adonai Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, HaMashiach, the Messiah, Yeshua, salvation. So peace be to the Middle East. At the same time, we can't expect peace because until Jesus comes back. So what do I believe? I believe that all these signs of the end times, the Antichrist is getting the stage set for a one world government so that he can come down and rule this earth and promise peace. But it says in the Bible, he will promise peace, but then come a sudden destruction. So I believe Jesus is coming back soon, whether tribulation or rapture, the second coming. It doesn't matter the order. People want to be pre-millennial, amillennial, post-millennial. The fact is Jesus is coming back and you got to be ready no matter what. I'm not being left behind. I'm not going to. I'm not going to deny Jesus. If I got to get killed for my faith, if I got to be sacrificed, right? And it's easy to say like Peter, but then deny the Lord later. So Lord, give us strength to follow Jesus all the way through. Now here's Second Baptist Church. Now, uh, I was just talking about the war, I, like you were asking, but we're in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual war. So once again, salvation, we pray for everybody. Everybody needs Jesus, the Jews and the Palestinians. All right. Now, moving on from that, I think we're going to... Uh, Let's walk around the church, and then we're gonna head back towards the park. What was that? What was that next question you had? Uh, what do you think about the Ukraine and Russian war? Oh, I don't even want to talk about that nonsense. I think that's a bunch of politics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, you know, uh, I don't even want to get into uh, all the politics and the lying that goes on with presidents and different things like that. Yeah. We know people are getting bombed in Israel right now. We know stuff is happening, and 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 I pray for the innocent victims in Russia and Ukraine and everything like that. But at the same time, it seems like a distraction. We don't know what's going on. with. I have no idea. I think China, too. China, too. Oh, my goodness. All we know is that Psalm says that uh, in chapter two, why did the heathen rage? Why do the kings of the earth, those are the world leaders, the political leaders, conspire against the Lord and his anointed? This is a spiritual war. Those who don't have Jesus are against the church. Those who don't have Jesus are against Christians. Those who don't have Jesus are against the Bible. All right. And they want to serve the devil. 
they want to fight over power and they want to bring in the Antichrist. I don't know what's going on with the rest of the world and what's going on because I don't trust politics. I don't trust the news media. I don't trust left, right, Republican or Democrat. So I can't really say much. But from what I've heard going on, these are just more end time sign in Matthew 24. And that includes uh, Israel, especially, but Ukraine and Russia, right? Just like the pandemic. We, we, we know that's a plague that was prophesied in Matthew 24. And end time's a global plague. It was a wake-up call. It put a lot of people to sleep, though. A lot of churches stopped meeting, right? But it's time to have Psalm 91, faith, and stay in the church, stay in the Word, and realize Jesus is coming back. Moving on from that, what was that other question? So what are those books? Oh, let's go, let's get over here in the light, and then I can break down some of these books real quick. Okay. Uh, this is Second Baptist Church. Um, this is African American church. Of course, it's mixed. Um, I was here on October 1st. I used to go here years ago, but uh, wanted to come back on October 1st. They had a special spiritual war uh, message. And God bless the pastor, Reverend Kevin Williams, and the whole church in Jesus' name. Thank you for letting us be here for a few moments. Um, I'm going to sit down right here real quick. Uh, all right, we got Kingdom Man here. Now, the reason I wanted to show these books real quick is because I might give a book review on these books. Kingdom Man by Tony Evans. All right. Every Christian man is a kingdom man. According to Revelation chapter 1, 6, we have been made kings and priests of the Most High God. All right, that means we've been given dominion over sin, dominion over evil, dominion over the temptations of the world, and dominion over the devil in Jesus' name. Praise the Most High God. And even Peter 2, 9 says you are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood. We are kings and priests. This is a book called The Adversary. I just read this recently. It's got some powerful prayers of spiritual warfare, Christian versus demon activity. This is meant for the Christian who wants to get in the war and battle. I'm going to talk more about this later, about people getting set free from hearing voices, from seeing demons and hauntings and ghosts in their house, being tormented, sleep paralysis, messed with. People that had to get on pharmaceutical medications for anti-depression, anti-anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia that were delivered and set free in Jesus' name by powerful men of God who preached the word led them to salvation in Jesus and repentance and renunciation of everything occult and everything of the devil and then being set free and getting off of medication and not hearing any more voices. This is a spiritual war. This modern psychological nonsense and psychiatry is also of the devil. That's pharmacia, sorcery. We still going here? Jesus is Lord. That's still recording? Amen. So we'll be back with that too. Now this amazing testimony by a Brahmin high priest in India who was a Hindu guru who met Jesus. All right. And I want to talk about this real quick because... I used to be involved in Hinduism. I used to be involved with gurus and Hindus and Buddhists and the third eye and meditation. And I went to India for seven months even. I visited all the temples. I wanted to know everything, but I renounced Hinduism. Hinduism is of the devil. All those Hindu gods out there like Krishna is a fallen angel, is a demon of Satan. And Jesus has won the victory. I do not support Hindu gurus, I do not support any false religions, but the Bible is true. Jesus is Lord, and all these false gods, Shiva, Krishna, and all the false goddesses. Right now, Hindus are doing a nine days and nine nights to the goddesses of Hinduism. These goddesses are demons. These, these, All these gods are false gods. They are fallen angels. They are satanic devils. That includes Krishna, Shiva, and all these goddesses. I rebuke them and renounce them in Jesus' name, and I pray for my people to get set free. That's one reason I got the name Hebrew King Moses is because I'm going back to where I came from to bring my people out of the occult, to bring my people out of Hinduism, to bring my people out of Islam, to bring my people out of all these false religions in the new age. And I'm not going to do it because I don't have power, but Jesus is going to do it. Like the Bible says, not by my might, not by my power, but by the Holy Ghost in Jesus name. So powerful testimony by Rabbi Maharaj, who was a Brahmin and guru who was enlightened according to the false light of Lucifer given by these Hindu gods. Krishna spoke in the Bhagavad Gita and he teaches reincarnation. That is of the devil. Krishna is a demon and that is false doctrine, right? He was set free by Jesus and he became an anointed and empowered evangelist of the Most High God. So great testimony. Anybody who's a former Hindu, knows anybody who's in Hinduism, needs to read this book and help them get enlightened. Lastly, I have one more book, one of my favorite books called The Witch Doctor and the Man. This is by... Bishop Samuel, Samuel Vagalos Kanko, former African witch doctor from Ghana. All right, this brother used to do astral projection, fly of his body, do all sorts of voodoo, communicate with spirits. Jesus saved him supernaturally and set him free, and he became a mighty evangelist for the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. There's only one true God. 
All these other religions are false. All these other holy books are false. Jesus is the one true God. The Bible is the only true word of God. So I pray everybody who sees this message gets saved, repents, reads the Bible, gets saved and set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, let's move forward. Thank you for bringing up the books. Now, as we circumambulate this church, I want to say praise God for Second Baptist. Amen. Praise the Lord and bless this church. Bless the pastor. It's a blessing to have a real church. You know, we have a lot of churches out here in Wheaton, Illinois. A lot of history with Wheaton College and College Church, even back to the 1800s. And there was a lot of powerful moves of God out here, right? But now when I look around, I see a lot of weak churches. I see a lot of Laodicean, weak, watered-down churches with a lot of money, big buildings. But no solid Bible preaching, no solid Holy Ghost power. Now, I'm not saying all churches. I'm not saying all churches. There's some solid churches out, out here for sure. A few of them, Second Baptist, College Church, Wheaton Bible Church, churches that stand on the Word of God and preach it boldly, right? But there's thousands of churches out here, and a lot of them have just gone down, start mixing with the world, become weak. People aren't getting saved. That's why they want to be entertained. You know what I mean? It's not about being entertained. Let's go this way. You know, it's not about sending people to counselors and psychologists. If you're a pastor and you can't help your people with the power of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, you need to step down. And if you go into a church like that, you're in a social club. And ain't nothing wrong with having a social club because we all need friends and community. That's what the church is for, but it's not a social club. It's called the ecclesia, the called out assembly. Each Christian is a bodily temple of the Holy Ghost. But when two or more are gathered, Jesus is among them. And when the church is established, as it was in the New Testament, with bishops, apostles, prophets, pastors, you know, there's order in the church. There's power in the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the power of the church. So it, it, is, it is important and essential that every real Christian find a solid church to be in. But you got to go there with the word of God. You got to read the Bible by yourself because that's the only way you're going to know if there's a real pastor preaching. You could be in a church with a bunch of lying devils and hypocrites like I used to be. Oh, Lord, Jesus saved me from all kind of stuff. Not only false religions, just living the life of a hell racer. You know what I mean? But if you are listening to a solid preacher and you got the Holy Ghost, you're in a solid church. Now, on the other hand, you could be in a church and a pastor is not preaching the word of God. Well, what are you there for? That's the question. What are you there for? Now, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got the word of God, you can share and influence other people, but you're there to be under the, uh, the authorized uh, leadership of the pastor. So you need a bona fide pastor, right? So that's what matters. Because if you got a solid pastor preaching, thank God for the solid pastors I got in my life, then the whole church could be lost, but they're going to get saved eventually because they're going to hear the word of God. So that's what matters. Find you a good preacher. That's how you find a good church. Because the pastor is going to preach from the word of God. That's what builds the church. Jesus builds the church. He's the word of God manifest in the flesh. So what do you think of... Uh, yeah, I'm preaching. Keep going. So what do you think of uh, the new generation? You think a lot of them are atheists now? New age religion? Yeah, you know, uh, let's get across here real quick. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's true, though. There's been statistics. There has been statistics showing that this new, as generations keep uh, moving forward, the belief in God is going down. That's a strategic attack of the devil. That's also a sign of the end times, also again, once again. But the fact is, it don't matter if you're from the oldest generation alive or the newest generation alive. Oh. You know, yeah. everybody needs Jesus. Everybody is fallen. You could be raised in the church and know the whole Bible and be completely lost because, you know, that's, that's, you know, people pretend. I, I, I've been, I, I've done it. I, I've been a fake Christian. You can put on the whole, know, know all the right words to say, dress up in a suit, go to church, shout glory, hallelujah, start dancing and preaching, and then come home and start cursing people out. And I've seen it and I've done it. So it doesn't matter what age you are. Everybody needs God and everybody needs the word of God and Jesus. But yes, as time goes on, like the Bible says, you know, people will depart from the faith great falling away and even people have become atheists and then people are just sick of organized religion and corruption even in the churches 
So, you know, everybody has a spiritual desire, so they've gotten into the new age. They've gotten into the occult. They've gotten into the law of attraction. And let me use my mind to manifest. You know, I did all that. Crystal powers, chakras, kundalini, meditation, third eye. I've done it all. Astral projection. You know, all that nonsense of the devil. The devil going to get people with that light of Lucifer trying to trick them, give them something, giving them an experience, giving them an emotional feeling, some blissful ecstasy. Start chanting, start meditating. All that nonsense, getting to sorcery, psychedelic drugs, mushrooms, I did it all. So yeah, the devil is getting people because people are leaving the church, not believing in God. They want to be their own God, yet they want the spiritual power. They want the spiritual experiences. That's why they're getting into magic and witchcraft and all this nonsense. But God is good because actually the devil is a liar. The devil's trying to hijack everything. Actually, God Almighty is the supernatural God. God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, he does all the miracles. He has all the power. And all this little magic witchcraft occult idolatry nonsense of the devil is a bunch of child's play compared to jesus christ so i don't mess with that astrology i don't mess with that witch doctor i don't mess with the voodoo and santeria and yoga and all that nonsense i used to do why do you think i shared about these testimonies same people god brought them out of that nonsense so what do you think about the aliens that they spotted on the they spot us aliens? You know, UFOs. Man, people don't know that we are the real aliens because we came from the kingdom of God. According to John chapter 1, we have been made sons of God, those who believe in Jesus. We don't represent this earth. Like Jesus said, we are in the world, but not of it. We are from the kingdom of God, and we're writing the supreme almighty creator alien, Jesus Christ, to come down with New Jerusalem kingdom city and rule this earth, make everything all new. So if they want to talk about extraterrestrials, actually, we are the true extraterrestrials if you've been born again by the spirit, because now you're from the kingdom of God in the world, but not of the world. Now, as far as this uh, political propaganda, as far as this brainwashing and indoctrination, they've been talking about these aliens for thousands of years. That's why they put it on the History Channel. Let's try to get over here in the light. You get on this side. They try to put this, look, this is called predictive programming. This is a satanic agenda to make people believe that all the false gods of Egypt, Sumeria, Babylon, Hinduism, Maya, all these false gods of the past, according to ancient alien theory on History Channel, that these gods were aliens because there's so much archaeological evidence, hieroglyphics, temples and pyramids being built to these different beings, these Nephilim beings, these hybrid beings, some of them with animal bodies, animal heads, human heads, like the Egyptian gods and Hindu gods. These are all fallen angels, according to the book of Enoch, which is, is not scripture, but it's quoted in the book of Jude. Enoch was a prophet, right? So this is relevant information. The Bible says those angels which fell and kept and left not their left their first estate, are you know, and some of these angels are in chains in prison, according to Genesis chapter six. When these fallen angels came down with the human women and they had children like Hercules, he was half god, half man, or the Pandavas from Mahabharata. These are fallen angels. These are devils that were able to take on flesh and have children on the earth, and they were called the Nephilim, the hybrid beings. So who are these aliens, according to what they're trying to tell us, even NASA and the government? All right, I'm going to tell you, at the top, they all worship the devil. Now, you got these pawns in the game that don't know nothing, just working for NASA, working for the media, working for the government. But if you get up at the top with popes and presidents and Freemasons and Luciferians, they already know these aliens are fallen angels and demons, but they want to lie to you. They want you to be afraid of some evil aliens coming to destroy you, and they want you to have faith in some good aliens that are going to save you. The devil plays both sides like two sides of a coin. Devil is the prince of darkness, and he's the lord of light, the false light of Lucifer. Now, God Almighty controls all sides. He's sovereign above. He's the grand orchestrator. He's the almighty creator. And even sometimes when he's been um, um, manifested his presence, you know, there's a divine darkness and a divine light, and there's a false darkness and a false light. Satan is the lord of that false darkness and false light, the prince of darkness, evil. Lucifer, the light bearer, the false light, where he tricks people, illusions. God Almighty will bring you in that divine darkness and show you the true light, which is Jesus Christ. So these aliens are nothing but devils. These aliens are nothing but false gods. And that's what I think about that. That's what I know about that. That's what the Bible says. And so this goes hand in hand with the agenda, the new age agenda, the occult, the one world government. You know, the new world order and the new age are also working together. Go back to the Theosophical Society and Alice Bailey and the United Nations. These people are preparing for a world savior. All right. 
there is a supernatural world going on right now. Now, not only that, the government has technology too. When I talked to my grandfather about this, who was a math professor, he just died a few years ago at 91. I just published his book. He was an independent theologian. We talked about aliens and we talked about UFOs. We have to, he has, he reminded me, he met people in the CIA. He reminded me also be careful because the government has top secret technology. Now, if you want to take it to the deepest level, where did they get that? When you got these deep underground military bases, you got these extra dimensional cities under the earth and under the sea, even as the Bible talks about and is actually spoken about by people who have gone there, like this witch doctor who became a Christian. There are extra dimensional spiritual cities under the oceans. What do you think Bermuda Triangle? Planes and ships disappearing under there. There are extra dimensional on the spiritual plane cities where Satan rules. And a lot of these UFOs are coming out of the oceans is what people are saying. People in the Air Force and Navy are seeing them. Now, some political leaders and governments who worship the devil have made deals with these fallen angels and demons, these so-called aliens, in exchange for technology. And they've been able to abduct people because just like in the back in the day in Genesis, there was a hybrid genetic program going on with the fallen angels creating half God, half alien, half uh, fallen angel and human beings. There were the giants and mighty men of renown, which was covered up. Of course, they found a lot of these skeletons, giants, 12 feet, 20 feet uh, tall. I mean, even Goliath was nine foot six in the Bible. You know, and there's bigger giants than that. All right, so this all comes back to the great deception of Satan. All right, and he works through many levels, like on the top of the pyramid. Why do you think our $1 bill has an Egyptian pyramid on it? I thought God saved the people from Egypt. I thought I thought they were slaves in Egypt. Now, if you go back to Joseph, there was a good Pharaoh who saw the power of God when Joseph interpreted his dream. He made him ruler of Egypt, right? Soon after that, the next Pharaoh enslaved the Egyptian people. And what did God do? He came and brought judgment on these false gods like he's doing right now. All right. So on the dollar bill, it says in God we trust, right? What God are they talking about? If they were talking about Jesus, don't you think there'd be a cross or a Bible? Why do they got a pyramid with the eye of Lucifer at the top in Latin, Novus Ordo Seclorum? means new world order because it's a new age. New world order and new age are the same thing. New world order is a one world government for the Antichrist. They're preparing. They utilize Hegelian dialectics, order out of chaos. They want to have people fighting race wars, country wars, you know, all sorts of chaos to bring about order. You know what I'm saying? That's how they work. Divide and conquer. Ordo ab chaos, 33. When they get to the 30th level in the Freemasonry, they take a vow to Lucifer. All right? I'm going to tell you something. I already knew that. But when I met this chaplain at the Christian college, I told him about that. He was surprised I knew about it. This old man, too, with a white beard. And he said his dad was a pastor for 20 years and a Freemason. And he thought he was just getting into altruism. Let's go back this way. Stay in that light. He thought he was getting into altruism and philanthropy and a brotherhood to help people out. As soon as he got to the 30th degree, this is a pastor for 20 years. As soon as he got to the 30th degree of Freemasonry, they asked him to take a vow to the Lucifer. Freemasonry is of the devil. And I pray everybody who's involved in that, they, they, that are Christian, that don't know any better, get out while you can and do your research. Get out in Jesus' name because you don't want to wait till you get to the 30th degree and you find out you got to take a vow to Lucifer. And you know who... You can find that in their books these days. Knowledge is increased. Do your research. Don't believe everything on the internet. Get you some books. All right? Go back to where it started. There's a lot of liars on the internet. There's a lot of liars and deception on the internet and YouTube. But the truth can be put on there, too. So find you some books online. Find you, go to the library. Do some research. Find some people that know what they're talking about have been involved with this stuff. And you'll find out that the devil runs Freemasons. Well, I have a lot of presidents been Freemasons. They put the pyramid on the dollar bill. And everybody wants to say this nation was Christian. Ain't no real Christian ever had no slaves, first of all, or killed no Native Americans. Now, we had some real Christians that came over here for sure. Quakers, Puritans, they made friends with the Indians. They didn't have no slaves, right? But the government people that came here, they were bringing all sorts of abominations. Even Thomas Jefferson was a deist. George Washington was a Freemason. All right, but God had his people. He always has the remnant. These powerful kings of the earth and these, 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 this uh, majority of people are always going to be of the devil. And those people at the very top, that 1%, look, the devil even offered, G Jesus was God, right? But he came down as a man, so he allowed himself to 
eat, get hungry, tired, but he also did all miracles. The devil said, bow down to me, I'll give you the kings of this earth. The devil is the temporary God of this earth, but God is all above him. He can't do anything without God's permission, according to the book of Joel. But you can sell your soul. You could serve the devil. He can give you power and fame. All right. And people do that in Hollywood. They do that in the music industry. And they're paid big money. They're given fame to spread evil messages and indoctrinate people and brainwash them with mind control so they can live and serve the devil. Repeating in their brain subliminal messages. Not even subliminal, just straight up cursing people. So get out of the world. Get out to Hollywood. Get off that witchcraft. Look, you go to Washington, D.C. Yes, God has worked in this nation. God bless America. I'm so happy to be in America right now. I'm not getting bombed in Israel right now. I'm not starving in Africa or on the streets in India in the third world. I've been to India. I've seen families asleep on the streets out there. Let's go this way. And you know what? Let's go this way. Actually, you're right. You're right. I'll follow you. I'm still happy to be in America. But you know what? The world loves America. No matter how much they hate America, they still want to come here. Right? I'm a global citizen. I'm from the kingdom of God. So I love all people. But I am happy and blessed to be here in a country where I have freedom of speech to right? Where I have the freedom to go and get educated, start a business, do work, whatever I want to do as an American citizen within the law. And I still have the Bible. Now they took out the Bible out of church. They took out prayer out of church. They took out the 10 commandments and look at how bad our schools are getting. As soon as they did that, worse and worse and worse, people getting killed, people shoot. But we also got to watch out for these sick satanic mind control government agents who serve the devil trying to create this chaos so they can take away guns so that they can enslave every citizen. I don't need a gun though. I got a gun. I got a double barrel shotgun. It's called the Holy Ghost written word of God, Old and New Testament. And I'll blast on the devil in Jesus' name. Because when I'm walking with the word and I'm walking with God, I got the power. And you got the power. Because Christ Jesus is victorious, high above all principalities and powers. And he's returning. So I want to be ready. That's why I'm spreading this message. But if you go to Washington, D.C., people want to look around for Bible verses. Yes, they put some biblical principles in there. But if you go to the Capitol Dome, for example, and you look up, you're going to see the apotheosis of George Washington surrounded by a bunch of Greek gods and goddesses. What is that? It's a bunch of... That's a bunch of devilish. That's a bunch of... Look, Washington Monument. What's that? An Egyptian obelisk. You see the same thing at the Vatican. The Pope is Antichrist too. Now, God bless all the good Catholics that love Jesus that are saved. But Catholicism is Antichrist. You don't pray to Mary. Mary's not a mediatrix. God bless Mary. We, we, we... Look, let's go around here one more time. We honor and respect Mother Mary for being chosen by God to give birth to the physical body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just like we honor the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul and all the prophets and men of God, the Old and New Testament. We don't pray to them, all right? We don't even pray to angels. We pray to God Almighty in Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Ghost, guided by the Word of God, right? There is no mediator between God and man but Jesus Christ, all right? The Pope is Antichrist. He's meeting with all the political leaders, always has been. The Vatican and the Catholic Church has always persecuted Jews and Christians and never wanted them to translate the Bible into the common man's language because they wanted to keep making that money. People thinking they need all these different priests and confession. It turns out all these people are corrupt anyway at the top now. God bless all the innocent people. A lot of good Catholics love Jesus, but you got to get out of that religion. Got to get out of the Catholic Church because Jesus is the only way. Mary is not a mediatrix. She is blessed, but she can't save you. Jesus had to save Mary too. That's a fact. That's a fact. And God bless my Ethiopian Orthodox brothers and sisters. I still visit the Ethiopian Orthodox Church sometimes early in the morning on Sunday because they meet early. And they are very devoted and religious. And they love Jesus too. But you know what? The Orthodox Church also has that problem of revering, honoring to the point of reverence and worship and thinking that they can pray to Mary and she's going to help them get Jesus mercy. That's a lie. So anyway, God bless them all. All the true saints of God that love Jesus and are saved. Every denomination has problems. Every person has problems. Every pastor has problems. Every church has problems. But the fact is we need to stand on the solid rock of the word of God. And that's how you know what a true church is. They're not adding to the word or taking away from the word. That's exactly what Jesus condemned with those synagogue of Satan Jews, the Pharisees, when he said, repent of, I'm paraphrasing, all their traditions that they had, their extra biblical traditions, like the Kabbalah. That's of the devil. 
That's a Jewish mystic system, no different than the Hindu chakra system. Just Satan's secret knowledge to enslave people organized in different ways, different languages, different traditions. The devil has so many religions. There's only one true religion, that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So, now Jesus is getting ready to come back. The gospel's been published throughout the world. All the signs of the season are here. Jesus says, no man knows the day or the hour. But you know what? He gave us the signs so we can understand the season. He told us to watch and pray and be ready. And yet I hear a lot of Christians saying, oh, we don't know when he's going to come back. It could be another hundred years. They don't see what's going on with artificial intelligence and the mark of the beast system. What you know about artificial intelligence? What you think about artificial intelligence? Yeah. It's all right. You got any questions about artificial intelligence? Not really. I mean... It's just like they say, you know, television killed the radio star, right? Okay. That was, you know. And then hey. the internet killed the television, now we got artificial intelligence, gonna kill it all? Yeah. Okay, but what about the Matrix? You seen that movie, obviously, right? Yeah. Now, we don't live in a movie because, actually, truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. When you look at the Bible and you realize you're created by a God Almighty, you got dragons and angels battling. You got Jesus coming back, a whole UFO city coming out of the sky. Oh, my Lord. The truth is stranger than fiction. They can't make a movie about this. They can't make a movie that's as crazy as the Bible. That's more sci-fi and fantasy than the Bible, but it's real life. I'm living. I'm breathing right now. I don't know where I came from if I didn't have the word, but I got God. Now, artificial intelligence, I see what you're saying. It can be used for good. Yeah, knowledge, could, knowledge could spread. Somebody could use artificial intelligence and get the word out there, maybe. Yeah, but man. you know what I'm saying? Like, people can also be enslaved. People can also be under mass surveillance. People yeah. can also be controlled by artificial intelligence. Well, they said the same thing about TV. And I believe it, ha believe it happened to a well, certain degree. People well, were, well, well, why do you think people put millions of dollars into advertising yeah. on TV? Because it affects what people's choices they make to go and buy things. Yeah. So people are being controlled by TV. People are being controlled by Hollywood, the music and the politics. Because whatever they see and they hear from these politicians and this news media, and their uh, celebrities, they seem to support. So they are being controlled by the frequencies. They are being controlled by the radio waves. They are being controlled by the television waves. And that's why I'm trying to get controlled by the Holy Ghost. Because just like a TV and a radio tunes into invisible frequencies, when I open up the Word of God, the greatest technology that was ever given, like the Ark of the Covenant, I'm tuning into the invisible power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And I rebuke all that witchcraft in Jesus' name. And I pray that we can also use everything that God has allowed to come into existence on this earth including right now as we make this video on this technology of this smartphone for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise the most high God. So, yeah. artificial intelligence, we got to watch out here now. Yeah. I want to tell you what my grandfather and I, one of the last conversations that we had. Okay. And uh, uh, we can get on the path if you want. You want to go this way or get on the path? This way? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you mean through there? Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay, we'll go through here. One of the last conversations... I had with my grandfather on his 90th birthday. Remember, he was a mathematician, math professor, college level, and also engineer who worked on computers when they first came out. Late 1950s, 60s, computers were filling up whole rooms. You know what I'm saying? No, you're good. You can stand over there. And so... Even though he became a theologian, he was always interested in keeping up on uh, technology, computers. And so when I was there in 2019, November 10th on his birthday, he had a science magazine, science and technology magazine. This was uh, four years ago now. And it was talking about artificial intelligence and the capabilities of man making a machine and that machine becoming sentient. Sentient means self-aware, conscious, ability to think, reason, and feel, and make decisions beyond algorithms and, you know, control mechanisms that were already programmed in there. Now, we, we, we talked about it. We talked about how over years of time, the exponential increase in knowledge of the machine, the computers, could gather so much information, all the information, access to it, studying human beings through trial and error and through that they could appear to be sentient. 
But when it comes down to it, no machine can be sentient. Only a soul can be sentient. So if it gets to the point where uh, any robot or machine, artificial intelligence, becomes sentient, that's called demon possession. Because there is no machine without a soul that can actually become conscious and self-aware without a soul. It can imitate awareness to the point of looking human, sounding human. But until it actually gets a soul, it will not be sentient. Therefore, if it does get a soul, it's a demon soul. Because ain't no good soul. Human being is not going to possess and cannot possess a machine or idol. A holy angel will not possess a machine or idol. But we know according to the Bible that in the Old Testament, the Lord says the gods of the nations are devils. And in Corinthians chapter 10, it says that when people worship devils, when Gentiles worship idols, they are worshiping devils. Because a stone or a metal statue is just like a television. It's tuning into invisible frequencies. When you worship an idol of a false god, you aren't even supposed to worship a statue of Jesus. That's why the Catholic Church is wrong about that. Though. But when, when these pagan worshipers worship idols, they are tuning into demonic frequencies because a demon can't possess an idol. Therefore, with that logic, in these end times, in this modern times, a devil can also possess a computer idol. That's what I believe. And that's based on the word of God. Keep on, keep on. still recording yeah okay yeah so ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with us this morning uh we are you know this is just an improvisational video you can't go yet uh keep the video going what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross over go underneath the tunnel show them the mural and then we're gonna sign out let's get across now we're gonna sign out for today but i'm looking forward to making new videos uh i want to get robert on there too um so as the lord leads and, uh, you know, whether we want to talk about testimonies, uh, great books to enlighten people, open up the Bible, talk about politics as it relates to the end times and what's going on in the world, which is important. Um, there's actually just, just a lot to speak about. But the main mission here is to evangelize because, you know, everybody wants to know what's going on. Everybody wants to know the hidden knowledge. We're all looking for secrets. We're all looking for power. We're all looking for wisdom. We're all looking for understanding. Why are we on this earth? What's going on? And uh, with all the chaos and the wars going on in the world, people are wondering, well, is the world going to end? Is Jesus coming back? What does the future hold? Am I going to live or die? And when I do die, where am I going? Does life continue on? Well, yes, life continues on. That's why we need the Bible. The Bible tells us where we came from, what's going on in the world, why we're here, when Jesus is coming back. All right. You want to stop it here? No, no, I want to get to the mural and then stop. Okay. Why Jesus is coming back, when Jesus is coming back. Like I said, we've been given the signs. We've been given the seasons. And uh, what our future holds. Because life on this earth is temporary. I could die today. I could live another 80 years if Jesus doesn't come back quite yet. But I believe he's coming back soon. But when I die, I'm going to step into eternity. But I know with Jesus, I'm going to live forever. And I'm going to be blessed with God. But there's only two places to go. There's heaven and hell. And it's eternal. you got one life to live on earth. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to live and then die and then the judgment. And then your eternal life begins. There's a second death for those who reject Jesus. That's called being thrown to the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. But God says in the Bible he doesn't want anybody to perish or go to hell. He wants all to repent and get saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So... We all need Jesus to be saved, and Jesus is for everybody, but we have volition. God is sovereign, but we've been created in his image, so we have human agency of free will to make a choice to receive the love of God if we want to be saved. So people choose heaven or hell by, by, by if they choose Jesus or not. All other gods, including all the Hindu gods, Krishna, and all the other Hindu gods, and all the other false gods, Muhammad, 
the guy with pride. He's going to lead you to hell because they're all of heavens. Only Jesus is the one true God and give salvation. Salvation in Jesus is by grace and faith. It's available right now for everybody. So call on Jesus and be saved. Repent of your sins. Renounce all other false religions and gods and be saved by Jesus Christ. And anointed in the power with the Holy Ghost. Be blessed and be a blessing. Know that you have eternal life if you believe in Jesus. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins. That he is the Son of God manifest in the flesh. And that he's returning. And confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. And then go and get baptized in water by a bona fide pastor. Get to a church and start serving the Lord. Start loving God, loving people, and sharing the truth. That's the gospel. Faith without works is dead. We have to love people. We have to help people. We got to do it in the name of Jesus, though, because you just feed the poor, but you don't tell them about Jesus. You just help the body. You need to help the soul, too. So check out the mural. Can you see the whole picture? Now, my Ethiopian friend, Maharet Askada, who's a beautiful Christian woman, she inspired this mural by her poetry. If you look back at the cosmos, it's like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, let there be light. Then he created the sun, moon, and stars. And then there's the civilizations going back to Egypt and the progression of history. And then we're over here in America. We have all colors. There's only one race, the human race. But there's many different cultures, colors, ethnicities. And may all the people of God say amen and praise Jesus. What a beautiful thing. So welcome to Wheaton. We are 27 miles west of downtown Chicago. Let me just show you the hood real quick, real quick. Let's, let's show them the block. Let's show them the block where we're from. All right, we are in uh, Wheaton, Illinois. All right, we got the laundry mat. We got the we got the barber shop called Cuts here. God bless everybody. All the businesses, everybody's living here in Jesus' name. We got the restaurants down there. We got the train station, the train check. We got some Wheaton College apartments. We got the Wheaton Townhouse Association. All right, that's where I live. That's where Robert. That's where you live. And that's where Maharet lives. God bless her too. All right. All right, we got some more apartments over here. Look, there's a bunch of uh, Nepali and um, refugees over there that love Jesus. They go to a church on the block. Walk over here, and then we're going to close this video now. All right, look, let me tell you something. Bless the, bless the convenience store. There's a Muslim that works here. I'm praying he gets saved, too, in Jesus' name. I'm sure the gospel with him. This place used to be a yoga center, right? I shut it down. I pray the Lord shut down that Hindu yoga stuff, and it, it, it got shut down in Jesus' name. Now, why am I, why am I showing you this? I want to show you one more thing. This is the Bible house. One of my good pastors, pastor friends got this uh, a few years ago during the pandemic. And we were meeting here when the whole church was afraid to meet. His whole church was afraid to meet. But the pastor, I and a few others would meet here for prayer and worship. And they would put the, the, the in 2020, they would put the, uh, in 2021, they would put the service on Zoom. Right? All glory to God, Jesus Christ. God brought us through. Don't be afraid. Worship God. Meet and worship the Lord, and bless this church, and bless the block, in Jesus' name. All right, we'll see you soon. Peace. Can I stop it? Yeah.